Walmart is a monster. It's alive! It's the world's biggest retailer, raking in $514 billion in 2019 alone. It employs 2.2 million people. That makes it the world's third largest employer behind only the U.S. Department of Defense and the People's Liberation Army in China. You might have some feelings about the way Walmart does business, but you can't deny that they really know how to sell. And you may not know it, but there are psychological secrets behind why they're so good at getting us to buy. In this video, we're gonna talk about five genius ways that Walmart used psychology to become the world's biggest retailer. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, was a child of the Great Depression. He grew up moving from town to town in Missouri and Oklahoma as his father struggled to keep the family fed. Walton eventually went to college, determined to help his family financially. He spent some time in the army, and he even worked for the then very successful J.C. Penney Company. In 1962, after deciding that retail was where he wanted to make his fortune, Walton started the first Walmart in Bentonville, Arkansas. He might eventually have become the world's richest man, but back then, nobody knew who Sam Walton was, and they didn't know anything about Walmart. Walton knew that to get customers into the store and keep them coming back, he had to do something drastic. He needed to offer prices that no one else could match. But the problem was, when you had low prices, you had to sell lots of items just to make a profit. Let's say you're buying apples. At the local mom and pop store, they might cost a dollar a piece, but at Walmart, they cost 50 cents. If customers see that your apples are half the price, they're more likely to visit you. But it also means you have to sell two apples to make the same amount of money. The upside is more people will buy two apples. Some might even buy five or 10. So if you're selling 10 apples instead of one, you're making $5 at Walmart, while your competitor is still only making a dollar. It's sales volume that keeps you in business when your products are really cheap. Walmart figured out an easy way to up their sales. They just give customers bigger carts. Walmart shopping carts are massive, and that is no mistake. A study led by researcher Martin Lindstrom found that when the size of a shopping cart was doubled, customers bought 40% more items. But what's driving those sales? One possibility is the priming effect. That's when our brains call on unconscious connections in response to a stimulus also called a prime. In other words, what we're exposed to now will change our behavior later. When Walmart customers see those huge carts, they're primed to throw a few more things in the basket because they wanna fill up the empty space. And that helps Walmart get the sales volume that they need to keep their prices so low. Walmart are masters at grabbing customers' attention. They believe in that old retail saying, if they see it, we sell it. Since the earliest days of Walmart, Action Alley has been a signature part of the store layout. It's basically a square aisle with small shelves or bins that contain low-priced products or sales, like a $5 DVD. It sits right in the middle of the main shopping aisles. By sticking Action Alley right in the middle of an aisle, even though this interrupts customers, Walmart guarantees that people will see and probably act on the deals. But not everyone was a fan of Action Alley. In the early 2000s, a store redesign initiative called Project Impact removed Action Alley. Customers were complaining that it cluttered up the aisles and it got in their way. I told you I can't stand clutter. I warned but you. But less than a year later, sales had suffered so much that Action Alley was brought right back. Now, why is Action Alley so effective? Well, it's down to a behavioral science principle called salience bias. Salience describes how good an item is at getting your attention. If the product seems to jump out at you, it's salient. If it blends into the background and it takes a while to find, it's not. By sticking Action Alley in everybody's way, Walmart is making sure that these deals are super salient, even if they are kind of annoying their customers. When you think of sales, do you think of Walmart? Well, not if they can help it. Because of their focus on everyday low prices, Walmart doesn't do clearance prices or regular sales. Instead, they offer something called rollback prices. These are temporary reductions in price, which to be honest, sounds a lot like a sale, but they only call it a rollback, so okay. But Walmart does something interesting with these rollback offers. They always show the original price in big bold numbers on the rollback sign. So if green beans were 64 cents and now they're rolled back to 50 cents a can, the sign will have two prices. The old one, 64 cents, and the new one, 50 cents. 
why do they do that? Because people don't know how much things should really cost in isolation. Without something to compare it to, you really don't know if 50 cents is a good deal on green beans. I mean, you assume it is because that's what the sign says. It's down to a psychology principle known as anchoring. Anchoring says that our decisions are influenced by the first information we see. Our brains grab onto this information without being consciously aware that we're doing it. MIT professor Dan Ariely illustrated anchoring in an experimental auction he ran with his college class. First, he showed students random objects, like a bottle of wine or a textbook. Ariely then asked students to write down a fake price for each item using the last two digits of their personal social security number. So for example, if my social security number is 123456789, the price of a bottle of wine would be $89. After students wrote down the fake price of each item, they bid on it in an auction. Students who had high social security numbers paid up to 346% more than students with low numbers for the same item. I know, I know, unbelievable. Why is that? Well, because the first number they saw, even though it was completely unrelated, influenced how much they decided to bid. The students mentally anchored to that number. The higher the social security number, the higher the bid. So Walmart knows that when customers anchor to the original price, the rollback price always looks good in comparison. Anchoring can get customers to potentially pay more, but always feel like they got a good deal. Walmart might be the world's biggest retailer today, but during its rise to power, there were definitely some bumps in the road. They might be focused on their everyday low prices, but on more expensive products, they found that low price alone could backfire. Even if your intentions are good, it can backfire drastically. Let's take TVs, for example. When Walmart focused strictly on low price televisions, they weren't stocking brands that people knew and loved. And when people couldn't find the brands they trusted, they weren't willing to plunk down a couple hundred dollars on a TV, even if it was the cheapest TV they'd ever seen, when it wasn't a brand they recognized. Walmart found that to drive sales, they had to have brand names that people knew and loved, not just a low price. So they began stocking lower price models from brands like Sony, Samsung, and Magnavox. When they did, sales started to pick up. Why is that? Well, it's down to something called the authority principle. The authority principle states that people are more easily persuaded by authority figures. That could include police, government leaders, professors, and perceived experts or in the case of electronics, a well-known brand. Walmart stores have had greeters at its doors for decades, saying hello and goodbye to customers, handing out smiley face stickers, and generally being a nice friendly face at the beginning and the end of your Walmart shopping experience. Even though Walmart found greeters made their customers feel more welcomed, they're also adding a new position in some stores called customer hosts, Customer hosts are kind of like greeters on steroids. They greet, but they also make cart runs, they clean spills, and they lift heavy items for customers. Greeters and hosts both perform a critical role in Walmart's customer experience. Their smiling faces and helping hands help lift customers' spirits and generate some warm, fuzzy feelings for the retail giant. According to the psychological peak end rule, the emotional peaks and ends of any experience tend to punch above their weight. The peak end rule says that people judge an entire experience by only two points, how they felt at its peak and its end, not the average of every moment of the experience. Who discovered peak end? It's our old Nobel Prize winning friend, Daniel Kahneman. Kahneman and a research team explored this subject in a study about how people remember pain. He asked men to rate their discomfort during a colonoscopy procedure. Science, yikes. Yikes. Kahneman's team then compared the patient's remembered pain experiences with data recorded during the procedure. To their surprise, the team found people rated the pain of the entire experience based on only two points, the intensity of pain at its worst point and the pain toward the end of the procedure. Kahneman discovered that our brains can't really remember everything, so they used mental shortcuts called heuristics to pick out what's important. One of the most important heuristics is emotion. The more intense and more recent the feelings, the more memorable the experience. These findings are the foundation of the psychology principle known as the peak end rule, which whether it knows it or not, 
Walmart's greeters apply to perfection. When you start adding up the psychological principles at play in its experience, it's hard not to see why Walmart has become the retail giant that it is today. But what do you think? Have I missed anything? Tell me in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.